So, Last Epoch is finally coming out of early access this weekend. And so I thought I'd do a video, as it's something I've covered before on this channel, to discuss sort of the expectations of what we should expect from the full release and what I think will happen when it releases. So for those of you that have subscribed to my channel and didn't follow me because of my Diablo 4 or Last Epoch or other action RPG coverage, let me sort of set out the state of play for you in the action RPG world. While there's been a lot of action RPGs over the years from Diablo 1 to Diablo 4, Torchlight, uh, the Titan Quest games, there's been a lot of ARPGs, but there was definitely a huge ARP drought uh, about like 10 years ago, where really the only ARPG that was getting lots of traction was Path of Exile. Now with the release of Diablo 4, there's sort of two big players in the field. One is Diablo 4, which sort of appears to the, ap appeals to the casual dad crowd that doesn't want to focus too much on building things and doesn't care about having stash tabs, definitely. And they sort of, you know, it's, it's a more casual version of what an action hack and slash RPG is. And then there's Path of Exile, which you need a PhD in to make a good build on your own. And so we basically at this point, we have two extremes. We have one game that I find in Diablo 4 mind numbingly casual. And then we have another game that I find in terms of Path of Exile that is fun, but sometimes just too scientific for me to really delve into it. And the guys behind Last Epoch, they know what they're doing. And they are very aware that they're trying to hit a niche that is sort of the middle ground between those two. They want a game that has some levels of complexity, but you also don't need a PhD to play it. And that's why a lot of people are hyped about the release of this game, because a lot of people that are frustrated by Diablo 4 not being complex enough are looking forward to a game that is a little bit more complex, but they don't need to go to the school of grinding gear games to get an MSC in Path of Exile building. So it's a middle ground, and we're about to see over the next few weeks how that plays out. As usual, with the release of a big game right now, I mean, even though it is an indie game, it's a game that seems to have generated quite a lot of streamer hype. And if you've been in the chat of Last Epoch lately during its early access, you can tell there's a lot of like Asmund Gold and other big streamer fans in there. So on release day, it's definitely going to get smashed by a load of new players. And I just want to go through, because you know me, I always complain that YouTubers hype games. So I want to go through and do sort of a reasonable summary of what I think we can expect to happen from the game. And if you do buy the game and decide to play it on launch, what I think you should expect from the experience. So let's get into it. So because this is a YouTube video, let's start with the bad. The game is absolutely going to be swapped by streamers and their fans. And it is at, uh, up until recently, a reasonably small independent studio running out of early access. The servers are already lagging when I went back to play the game recently to make this video. I had multiple times where I cut out, multiple times where I couldn't go into the next zone. I had an entire bug where my character kept dying and I couldn't figure out why my character kept dying. And it turns out that my the server had desynced from my character. So I was playing the game, but my armor had just desynced from my character completely and I had to relog a few times to get my items actually synced back to my character. Weird bug, I can see how that would happen. But with a huge influx of players to the server on launch day, because we're gonna have streamers huge streamers covering it on launch day, I would expect. Gonna be a lot of lag. Not unheard of for the launch of a game, but if you do buy the game on launch, you should expect, if you're playing online, to have severe lag and a chat full of uh, streamer stands. That's just how it's gonna be. Um, I think a lot of Path of Exile fans, if you're coming to the game from Path of Exile, you probably will end up hating the combat. Because one of the things about the combat system is it is very simplistic. Almost every choice you make can be right as long as you follow through with that. On the other side, people that don't like Path of Exile will really like the fact that they can't absolutely ruin a character by just saying, no, I want to use this ability and this ability, and I'm going to follow through and put all my skill points into them. As long as you commit to something, as long as you commit to an idea in Last Epoch, your build will probably function um, reasonably even into endgame. Um, the other thing that might be difficult for some people is that regardless of complaints by me and other people, the game's map is still quite clunky. There's a lot of zones. It's a huge, huge world. And navigating it can still feel a little bit confusing, especially because the game involves time traveling a la an old RPG like Chrono Trigger. So sometimes you can sort of lose where you are, not just on the map, but in time, which makes kind of playing through the game for your first time a little bit confusing. But that's sort of something that I, now that I'm on like my third or fourth character, it, it feels a little bit better. 
Um, I think a lot of people that might enjoy the game initially with the hype once they hit end game, and you can hit end game here pretty quickly. I've gotten almost two characters to end game, and I've only got like 25 hours in the game. I mean, I say only, but it it's not like a huge, huge time sink um, to get to max level, even if you're super slow about it. And I worry that some people, once they get there, they might realize that especially people coming from that are either super addicted to the very grindy in game of Diablo 4 or people that are indebted to the super uh, complex in game of PoE and mapping in the Atlas system might find that the in game system here is a little bit on the simplistic side. Basically here you grind through islands that are kind of similar to PoE's map system, but it's a lot less um, involved, which some people will like and some people won't. It, this game is very much, as I've already said, it's a Goldilocks game. Some people from the Diablo community are going to find it too hot, and some people from the PoE community are going to find it too cold. Or is it the other way around? I don't know. Overall, those are my general worries for the game. My, my big worry is that there's going to be so much streamer hype that the actual qualities of the game will get overshadowed by uh, a bunch of YouTubers making videos about it, which I, I now think is a little bit of... Ironic. But anyways, let's move on to the good. So the good thing is my favorite bit about the game. Sorry, my voice is going. One second. Mm. The, the good thing about the game is got builds, man. If you can look through the skill tree and you can piece together different aspects of a character archetype that you want to put together, you can probably make that build work with the correct gear. And for me, as someone that like just really likes the power fantasy of different types of builds, I love that. If you're the sort of person that really you like Grim uh, Grim Dawn, you liked a Titan Quest, this is probably going to be your thing. Much more so than Diablo 4, much more so than Path of Exile. This is that I love building my cool character that I really enjoy thing where I don't give a damn about the meta. And I I'm really pleased with that. The community around the game, and this may change upon launch with all the streamer stands joining, but in general, uh, my experience with the community in the game, because it has a global chat, has been really good. Everyone seems nice, which is sometimes rare online. The other really great thing is the devs seem to care about the game, but more importantly than caring about the game, and I know there's been some drama around the cash shop, I can't speak to that, I haven't really gone through the cash shop. Frankly, as long as the game is fun, I don't care if, the, if there's a cash shop as long as it doesn't impede my enjoyment of the game. But the devs, more importantly than being ethical or not, they seem to know what their game's niche is. And that's really important moving forward with the development of the game. They've been very clear on who their audience is. And that's what I love to see from a developer. When, when you're trying to sell me a game, I want to know, hey, am I the guy that's supposed to play your game or not? And when a developer like Blizzard, Blizzard have done this terribly, they're like, buy a game. And I'm like, yeah, but is the game for me? And they're like, you like Overwatch too, right? You're like, no, no, I, I don't. Is this the game for me? Last Epoch, the developers have been very, very clear. Are you the guy? Do you miss Grimdark? Grimdawn? Do you miss Titan Quest? Do you want just a standard ARPG with some more modern features and some better online play, but you don't like the grindiness of a Diablo 4 and you don't like the complexity of Path of Exile? They know who their audience is, and that's just one of the best things that you can say about a developer. And I think that leads into my final point in this video that's the positive. And this is going to sound to some people like a almost a criticism. But the game is just a really, really awesome game to zone out to. The problem that I have with Diablo 4 is, well, I just find the game too simplistic. And I find myself min-maxing to try and beat bosses that don't require any skill and annoy me half the time. Meanwhile, with Path of Exile, I've got a calculator out. I've got an Excel spreadsheet out. I've got two different apps. I'm trading on one window and playing the game with the next. I just want a middle ground. I want to care about the build and be interested in what I'm doing and have some freedom. I don't want to be on a, a hamster on a tread, treadmill, which is the way I feel in Diablo 4. But on the other hand, I don't want to try and be doing a, a PhD in Path of Exile. And this game really hits that spot for me where I can just, you know, grab a beer, grab a cup of tea and just say, I'm going to make a character that does this and just sit down, play the game and chill, put on some heavy metal in the background, put on a podcast and just enjoy playing an ARPG. And for those of you that are old school ARPG players and you miss that vibe, that's what I think Last Epoch is really going to hit. 
Um, and I think that's I think that's really all I have to say. Short video from me. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming Last Epoch. I'm currently recording an audiobook, and I'm way behind on it at the moment. But when I'm done with that, I haven't streamed on Twitch in a long time, and I'm really, really, I'm promising myself because I've got some time off work. I'm gonna hit Last Epoch hard on Twitch, and we're gonna make all kinds of fun builds, and we're gonna chat, and it's gonna be great. Hopefully, provided I, you know, finish darn audiobook. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe because I'm going to be covering this, you know, I'm not an ARPG channel. I cover RPGs, whatever kind of RPGs they are. But this, I think, is going to be a very fun RPG. And it would be good to see you on my Twitch stream and good to see you on my YouTube again. So like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the coming weekend. Peace.